So last week, I was away in Ontario. I was meeting with the Companions of the Cross executive up in Cumbermere. This is a rural part of Ontario. We have this little retreat house. And we had a series of meetings uh, that week. As you can see, they're experiencing real winter over there. I, I got off the plane, got out of the Ottawa airport, and took in a, a deep breath of fresh air. And I was like, oh, <coughs> I almost died. It was minus 17. The day before in Halifax, it was plus 11 and raining. And so quite a contrast. Anyways, we had this wonderful week, lots of meetings, lots of prayer, sharing meals together. And we decided to cap off the week in the best way imaginable by watching the movie Maverick, right? So anybody seen this film? Okay, a few of you. It's, uh, I, I would say it's kind of like uh, the perfect blockbuster movie. I, I, might, I might offend some people here, but I think it's even better than the original Top Gun. Uh, I, I actually, it was my second time seeing it. The first time I saw it, I was on a plane, ironically, and um, there was a mild bit of turbulence, in fact. And so I got the full 3D effect. Anyways, it's this story, you know, these young, good-looking fighter pilots, the best of the best, and they know it. Uh, you know, they're in top physical condition. They're smart. They're articulate. The, the dialogue is crisp. They're, they're used to traveling at hypersonic speeds, facing, you know, these incredible G-forces. And then Tom Cruise comes along in classic fashion, and he just, he takes the manual for the F-18, and he throws it in the trash. He's like, we got to push these planes beyond their limits. And in fact, we have to push you, humans, beyond your, your human limits. And we have all these examples, these rare specimens who are almost superhuman. And I thought to myself, you know, wouldn't it be great to be freed from the limits of our humanity? You know, wouldn't that be great, you know, not to have to worry about sleep, not to have to worry about consuming too many calories, uh, you know, to, to be able to have this intellectual capacity to absorb books at Mach 10, you know, I'd be able to keep up with Father Alex, you know, if I, if I could just do that. You know, wouldn't it be great to not have any of these human limits? And so there we were, you know, the, the movie finished, the lights came on. I dusted the crumbs off my belly, having eaten a, a bag of chips, you know, made it up to my, my bed, got into, into this old squeaky mattress, you know, fell asleep, dreamed about being a fighter pilot, woke up having drooled all over my pillow, you know, dragged my carcass out of bed, you know, not to the sound of, of uh, the, the, the uh, siren, I should say, of an aircraft carrier summoning the troops to battle, but the sound of, the shrill sound of my alarm clock telling me that it was another day. Went down to the kitchen, having found the coffee pot had spilled everywhere. <laughs> so I cleaned up the mess, got half a cup of coffee, and proceeded to have a distracted prayer time. You know, only too aware of the limits of my humanity. And yet, wouldn't it be free? Great to be freed from these limits. You know, physical limitations, which the older I get, I experience more and more. I'm experiencing even mental limitations. I, I heard it recently that beyond 40, it becomes hard to learn a new language. You know, so that ship has sailed. Or, uh, you know, spiritual limitations, where we, we encounter, many of us, all of us, encounter this battle in the spiritual life with, with sin with habits that are not good for us. And, and just to name a few, you know, some of us are prone to anger, for example. And uh, we can't seem to control ourselves. We hurt others in the process. Some are prone to lust. We know that we live in this time where there's this plague of pornography. People struggling, unable to, to remain pure. And, and struggling under the weight of sin and, and the shame that accompanies it. And, and others who are trapped in good old-fashioned judgment. And if you're like, yeah, there's a lot of angry people or all those lustful people, unbelievable. 
well, then you probably struggle with judgment, right? Which is a form of pride. And so in some way or other, we all are encumbered by these human limitations, these spiritual limitations, physical, mental. And wouldn't it be great to just be freed of all that stuff, to almost be superhuman? And yet I want to suggest today that what if we could see our humanity as a gift, as a blessing even from God. Now, we have today this, what's called the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, if you think I preach long homilies, Jesus preached one that lasted three chapters in the Gospel of Matthew. So he was up there on a mountain preaching away, and, and it's, it took a while. Anyways, I know that I often will, uh, will do my Holy Land flex, you know, just in the Holy Land. Well, actually, you may not know this, but fun fact, one of, our, one of our guys on staff, Jonathan, our music coordinator, he was born in Jerusalem. And he was just home just a few weeks ago visiting. His parents are Canadian, but, but uh, they moved there to the Holy Land. And he was just visiting them. And he told me, yeah, you know, while I was there, I met up with a, with a priest. And we decided to just go for a drive. And, and we, before we knew it, we found ourselves up at the Mount of Beatitudes. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice, eh? <laughs> so if you want to know about the Holy Land, talk to Jonathan. But uh, it was in this very place where Jesus gave this sermon, and at the beginning of it, we have what are called the Beatitudes, where Jesus offers these instructions for how to live the blessed life, how to experience deep happiness, how to live in a way where we are under the favor of, of God. And so he begins, blessed are the rich, for they will experience financial security. <laughs> blessed are the famous, for people will speak well of them. Blessed are the comfortable. No, of course not. What does he say? He begins, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I want to focus just on this very first beatitude. You know, not material poverty where a person doesn't have enough, maybe not even enough to eat, but, but Jesus is referring to here spiritual poverty. And we might look to the image of empty hands, this disposition of heart, this interior awareness that I have nothing that I'm desperately needy for God, that I need Him to fill me up, that, that everything I have that's good has been given to me. I'm totally dependent on Him. I'm like a spiritual beggar. And he says, if you can be spiritually poor, then you will be blessed. You will be happy you will experience the fullness of life. Now, what's interesting, you go through the rest of the Beatitudes and they continue, you know, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth, etc., etc. And most of them, it's like some kind of future, uh, current reality and a future promise that is offered. But in this very first one, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right now, present, if you're able to, to experience this poverty of spirit, well, guess what? There's room for God to come into your heart and establish his kingdom right now. You don't have to wait for it in the future. Right now, he wants to be present to you. And where God's kingdom is present, that is where true happiness can flourish. Now, this whole concept of spiritual poverty it can be pretty abstract, and so I want to make it super concrete for us today, and I just offer a few examples from my own life, uh, what I've called some signs that you're growing in spiritual poverty, and this is kind of one of those things where it's like Father Simon says, you know, do as I say, not as I do. So these are some of the, the counter examples. Number one, a sign you're growing in spiritual poverty if you're able to love your limits. You can love your limits. You know, I'm all for, for pushing the limits, for trying to be the best person that God has made us to be, to, to do your utmost, to grow, to, 
to, to keep increasing in, in every dimension. And yet, we experience these moments where we come to the end of ourselves, where we, we hit roadblocks, say a physical roadblock, like you, you have an injury, or you get sick, or you experience mental fatigue, or even a spiritual failure. You fall into sin. What is your instinctive reaction to that? I know for myself, there's, there's a frustration, there's an impatience. Like, like, you know, I'm surprised that I have limits. <laughs> I'm like, I, I should be, be able to be better than this. I heard it said recently, somebody saying, we, we need to learn to love our triggers. You know, those things that set us off, those things that blindside us, that we, we react to. Well, similarly, if we can learn to love those, we learn to love our limits. It's in that very place where God can work. That's the first one. The second one, is a sign you're growing in spiritual poverty, you're able to receive help. Now, uh, you know, personally, I kind of like to be the maverick, you know? I like to be the one doing the helping rather than being helped. And I know lots of people who are like this, kind of independent, who they like to be, to be the maverick in whatever situation. Well, just the other day, it's Thursday night, we're having dinner just in my companion's household, and we're talking about, okay, who's going to do groceries this week? And it, we're on a bit of a rotation, taking turns. And I thought to myself, yeah, I could probably get out there and pick up the groceries. And, and one of my brother priests, this amazing, generous guy, Father Eve, he's like, you know, I'll do it. And, and he knows how busy I am. I got a lot, lot on my plate. And he said, you know what, there's nothing urgent we need, so I'll just go Saturday night and get the groceries. Okay, fine. Well, the night continues, and I think to myself, you know what, I think I could squeeze it in between this thing and that thing. And, and sure enough, so I go out and uh, pick up the basics, you know, come, come back. This maverick moment, I've saved the day. I got that uh, dozen eggs or whatever it was we needed. And, and I was reflecting on it afterwards. And I was thinking, you know, on the one hand, it's good, right? Because I don't want to be a bum. You know, I don't want to be lazy. I want to be a contributing member of the house. But on the other hand, it's like, am I able to receive help? And Father Bob Adar, the founder of our community, he said, do not deny your brother the opportunity to serve you. Now, taken to ex its extreme, it's like we can just become slothful and take advantage of other people. But I think at the heart of that is this awareness that, you know what? Every once in a while, we have to be able to receive help. And if we can, it's a sign we're growing in spiritual poverty. A third sign is that we can find confidence in God. Not in ourselves, but in God. And there was this situation recently where I, I kind of, you know, I'm at this point in my life where I'm starting to get a grasp of the things that I'm good at. You know, the things that God has gifted me in. I've grown in experience. I'm a slow learner. It's taken years. But, but I have a sense of, you know, where I can help. And self-knowledge is a gift. But what's dangerous is self-reliance, where we, we, we think we're so great. And so here I am. There's a situation. I, I kind of felt called to help. I wanted to help, and I tried to help. And it seemed like no matter what I did, I just made things worse, <laughs> you know, or they certainly didn't improve. And, and as I was reflecting on it, I was kind of disappointed, but even deeper than that, my confidence was shaken, right? Because here I was, I wanted to be this maverick to swoop in and save the day, to be the hero. And yet I was not able to do that. And what it revealed is I had placed my confidence in me, <laughs> my ability, my skill, my experience, when really I had to learn to place my confidence in God, to, to do our utmost, to pour ourselves out, to do everything we can, and yet to remain detached and to say, God, this, this belongs to you. The outcome belongs to you. And so a quick recap being able to love your limits, able to receive help, and to find confidence in God. These are signs 
that we're growing in this spiritual poverty. And if, if you're looking for somewhere to start, I'd say start with number one. When you encounter your limits, to actually take that to prayer and thank God. I had this grace moment recently where I was like, thank you, God, for my limits. Because it reminds me of how desperate I am for your help. Now, there's this touching moment in the movie Maverick. I don't want to give too much away, but this, this encounter between Tom Cruise and, and Val Kilmer, Iceman, if you remember. And here he is, you know, years later, these guys, when they were young, they were rivals jockeying for position. But Iceman, he's risen through the ranks. He's, he's become this adm- admiral. admiral. He's, he's uh, approaching the end of his life, actually. And he's in this very weakened state. He's barely able to speak. And, uh, and there he is, facing his human limitations, and yet he's totally at peace. Right? He's, he's living this blessed life. And not only that, he's able to be a blessing to Maverick. There's this moment where he just like offers this fatherly affirmation to him. And that's one of the, the fringe benefits of, of living this spiritual poverty. Not only can we experience happiness, but we can be a blessing to others. And I experienced this the, just the other day, uh, Friday night, I was visiting a parishioner who's approaching the end. And this person is so inspiring to me. And I know I've said this before, sometimes I'll visit people who are on their deathbed and, you know, do you want to go to confession? It's like, no, Father, I think I'm good. (laughs) Not the case. Here is somebody who is totally aware of their limits, even their spiritual limits. And just this sacred moment, this absolute privilege to be with this person. And I, at one point, I, I offer them Holy Communion, and they received, and there was this silent pause, and with eyes closed, they said, welcome Jesus. Here's this person who is almost at the end, who almost literally has nothing, and yet they have Jesus. And I saw this icon of what it is to love your limits, to be able to receive, and to have absolute confidence in God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.